famed earth maker. They say, when this world was covered with water, floated and looked about him as he floated and looked about, he did not see anywhere, indeed, even a tiny bit of land. Thereupon he sang, Where are you, little bit of earth? He said it, singing. He kept singing and singing. Coyote said, Indeed, there are not many songs that I don't know. And after that, he sang, kept on singing and singing. Coyote and Earthmaker find a bird's nest that they pull with ropes to create land. Coyote is the mess in your engine. He steals your concentration in the zendo. Mates for life. A good family man who helps raise the kids. He is total effort. Any good afternoon nap best dancer in the house. He eats grasshoppers and cocker spaniels, drinks out of Bel Air swimming pools, inspires others to write about him. He is jealousy. He is the gnawed squash in your garden. He may be serious, the dog star, who like coyote wonders and dies a while then comes back. Companion to Orion, the hunter, who like the rest of us, hunting, enduring value and knowledge, never forgets the brightest star in our heavens, God's dog. The dog family first appeared 60 million years ago. Today there are 35 species. Thomas Say gave the name Canis latrans to the species in 1823. Coyotes were called brush wolves until colonists came in contact with the Spanish settlements of the Southwest. Coyote is a Spanish word derived from the Aztec coyote which means God's dog. Coyote's relatives are the jackal, fox, and wolf. Depending on food availability, pups may stay with their parents through their second year or longer. Usually, females remain to help raise the following year's litter. By January, male pups are driven from home. These young coyotes have been known to travel 150 miles to find territories. In exploited populations, dispersal distances may be greater. Coyotes are native to North America and are found on no other continent. Today, their range includes most of the continent. Not more than 500 years ago, coyotes lived in this smaller range. How is it that while other predator populations are crashing, that coyotes are increasing in number? And why do eastern coyotes outweigh their western cousins by up to 30 pounds, effectively doubling their size? What spurred this expansion and what exactly is this animal called the eastern coyote? The original distribution of the coyote in North America was essentially from southern Canada down to, you know, northern Mexico and almost west to the coast and then east to the Mississippi, so more of the open, semi-arid sagebrush grasslands. But they did use forests somewhat, but not a lot. And since the uh, big predator eradication campaign starting in the 1860s and 1870s, the coyote has expanded its distribution by triple, and now it's all the way from near the Panama Canal to the northern extent of the boreal forest, from the east coast to the west coast, and it's certainly the coyote now is in different kinds of habitats, much more in those forested areas. And the thinking is that 
as we cleared forests and removed wolves. For both those reasons, we've caused this increase in the coyote's distribution, eliminating its competitor that can kill it and also creating more open habitat that coyotes tend to prefer. Once the east was an unbroken forest, a squirrel could have traveled from the Atlantic Ocean to the Mississippi River without touching the ground. Wolves, bears, and mountain lions were not uncommon in the east. Now, all but the bears are gone. With the disappearance of large predators, there was a niche to fill. Since 1975, large clear cuts have changed much of the forested landscape in the Northeast. As a result, deer and predators have been concentrated in smaller areas in winter, increasing the predator-prey ratio and the rate of predation by coyotes on deer. Jennifer Sheldon and Dr. Robert Crabtree have studied western coyotes in Yellowstone since 1989, before the wolf reintroduction. Since wolves have been reintroduced, they're, they're eating a lot of carcasses. But overall, the coyote diet is comprised of mostly small mammals, that's their basic staple, and in the winter it shifts over to largely carrion. And we determine this from a variety of methods. One is just by watching them. It's an incredibly observable coyote population, and we can often tell whether it's a, they're feeding on a carcass or eating a small mammal. But since we can't tell a pocket gopher from a vole from a ground squirrel at a mile away looking through a spotting scope, we go out and pick up the old proverbial coyote scat. And we wash those, rinse those, throw in static cling free, and uh, empty what's left of uh, the prey remains from a scat and sort through it. And we're looking for uh, incisors and mandibles and diagnostic parts of all those species that they, they eat, like a vole and a, a pocket gopher or a snowshoe hare. Coyotes are opportunists. They'll eat anything from insects and berries to mice and carrion. In Yellowstone National Park, coyotes live in a rare condition. It is one of the few places where man does not hunt them. Efforts to reestablish wolf populations in the United States in Yellowstone, Arizona, Minnesota, and North Carolina have dealt with two species. Interbreeding with coyotes has genetically compromised red wolves, and as a result, the species continues to struggle. have affected coyote populations in Yellowstone in many different ways.